there is a new, cheaper way to burn out investment casting molds and do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, should you get in on that? I'm trying on this channel to show that you, you viewer, can do all this maker stuff in your home garage. I'm always on the lookout for tools that can help you do that. I do a lot of stuff around here that requires a, a burnout oven or like a, a heat treat thing or a kiln or whatever, a box that gets really, really hot. And so far, I've been using a, a burnout oven kiln thing that you cannot buy. I had to make it. I built it years ago. There's a whole build series. It costs a fortune of raw materials. Um, you, you can go watch that if you want. Or you can drop just tons of cash on a commercially available one that does basically the same thing. I've never used those, so I can't with confidence say how good they are. Uh, but now there's a cheaper one. I got it right here. Vivor sent this to me to check out. Uh, they say it's good for 2192 Fahrenheit or 1200 Celsius, electric furnace for wax casting, metal clay DIY, metal temper tempering, glazing on pottery. <sighs> well, I do uh, a fair amount of some of those things, so I'm going to try it out and uh, go through some of the pros and cons and uh, maybe tell you if I think it'll work for some of those things and try to see if it's, you know, worth the very low price. How low? It's less than half the cost of the materials I bought to build the other burnout oven that I made years ago. Okay, but before we get to that, I'm gonna show you uh, what you get if you do get one. New burnout oven. Let's see what's in the box. Where's my knife? Here it is. Okay, so this is like a, a desktop, bench top, kiln, burnout oven kind of deal. I wanna see if it works for burning out those flasks. Okay, we got, we got some tongs. Some more leather gloves, cool. Oh, all right, hang on, hang on. Ugh. Check that out. All right, what is this? Please remove, oh, there's a vent up here. Okay, we got a handle. Our hinges over here. This looks like the same control setup that's in the melting furnace. What does this say? Inner liner is made of temperature resistant material, blah, blah, blah. Maybe small cracks, don't worry about it. Get over there. Okay. Yeah, that looks like the thermocouple that comes in the other ones. We have some exposed elements. This is a very soft, almost like a fire brick looking thing. Although the way it looks, it tells me this might be a coating or this is a castable material. Um, and then we have what looks like ceramic wool lined front. Pretty simple, neat. Plug in there, go, go. And that means it's on. It's getting warm already. Does the vacuum casting flask fit? It does indeed. It looks like I can go a little bit on a taller one. Not much wider though, that's pretty small. First off, a pro. It's pretty easy to use. Um, if you have one of these electric furnaces that I've shown you before, uh, it's, it's the same. It looks like exactly the same controller. It's a thermocouple inside. You flick the switch, you click the U, uh, then set the thing in Celsius, hit P, that turns it on. If you want to change it, hit U again, change the, the temperature, hit P again, and it will go to that temperature and just hold it. Pretty simple. When you're done using it, if you click P, it turns off the relay that powers the heater and it, it turns off. You cannot program a firing schedule. That's a con. So what's a firing schedule? Well, that's where you can program uh, other kilns, including the one that I built with like set ramp speeds, how fast do you want it to heat up to what temperature? How long do you want to hold it? How fast do you want it to change to a different temperature? How long do you want it to hold it? And so on. You can kind of program that in and that's, that's a schedule, burnout schedule or firing schedule or whatever. Uh, some other ovens also have, have cones. You say, I want to slow fire cone six and it'll heat up and, uh, and calculate how much heat work it's doing. And in some cases, like with my uh, investment plaster, they'll publish a schedule like this one. This kind of matters for investment materials. It also matters for some resins. You can still do that schedule. You just have to like watch, watch your watch and do it manually. You know, you can totally do that. Some burnout resins uh, don't, don't need that. Uh, I think one called Monocure Burn Away, that's a really good one. That's a fast fire. So basically if you just heat the thing up to whatever the max temperature is, you can just shove the flask right in there for a couple hours at max temperature and you're done. You can also do that with a lot of the other burnout resins. They don't suggest you do that, but you can you can get away with it. Just give it a shot. It's also a bench top machine, right? It fits on your bench. You can plug it into a normal 110 volt outlet. This is the only heat treat furnace kiln thing, whatever you want to call it, that I got that doesn't need 220. 
I got 220 in this garage. I realize most people don't. So if you just have a normal 110 volt outlet, you're good to go. It will not trip a 20 amp 110 circuit. Standard household circuit. I would not suggest you use it inside your house because burning things out generate a lot of fumes, but in a garage, it works fine. Despite not taking 220 volt, it actually heats up pretty fast. How does it achieve that? Well, it's kind of small. I only have one perforated flask for vacuum casting at the moment, and it fits all right. This is a pretty small flask. You can imagine if it were, um, I mean, I got some headroom, but if it were too much wider, it's not gonna fit and give me room to put the tongs in there. So it really isn't that big. If you wanna heat treat metal, that's gotta fit too. So if it's, if it's something small, you know, maybe Rubik's cube sized or something like that, it's gonna be fine. Uh, shorter knife blades will probably be all right, especially if they're folding knife blades and the blade itself isn't very long. Swords are right out, but you know, small tools should fit okay. I plan mostly to use this for burning out investment casting molds. So to test that out, I printed out a sprue tree and this stuff called clear cast resin. It's a really awesome resin, but you need a form labs printer to do it. So it's not a cheap setup. This resin is actually designed for much larger mechanical parts. You can print it hollow with like a, a lattice structure inside. So you can basically print very large hollow burnout parts, usually for, um, for ceramic shell casting. But I decided, eh, I'll try it. I'll print a sprue tree of rings. I'm always losing my wedding ring. Not if I have 16 of them. Anyways, I put it through the same uh, investment casting process that I did with everything else. I used Prestige Optima Plaster. I've heard R&R Plastic Cast is basically the same. Um, they, they should both work fine. I've never used that one. And I went with the method of uh, doing the manual programming. Watch my watch come out, change the settings. I did not follow the ramp rates very carefully. It didn't seem to be a problem. The plaster held up just fine. One thing to keep in mind with these, and these, to be honest, the furnaces, there's some variation in temperature from machine to machine. They're not all gonna be like perfectly lab grade, and I don't know of a way to calibrate it. I suspect this, kinda like this one, that it runs a little bit hot. That's just a guess, of judging by how the silicone seal reacted when I put the flask on there versus other times when I've done burnout in my other, in my other kiln. Anyways, the front opening makes it really easy to get a flask out of there. Like you can, you can easily fit the tongs in there, lift it out clean. The one I built has a top lid. That's a pain. You want the front lid. One tip I'll give you for this, while it's running, you're gonna hear some fan noise. When you're done using it, I'm gonna suggest you don't flip the switch off. I'm gonna suggest you click P. What P does is it turns off the heat relay. You'll hear a click, the heat will shut off, and it'll cool down naturally. But all the cooling fans that are in here are gonna keep running. It's probably not a super big deal, but I want there to be cooling going on while the thing slowly cools itself down. I don't want the fans to just quit and have all this heat bake the computers in there. Again, I don't know if that's required. It's just something that I, I thought would probably be a good idea. By the way, it got pretty toasty. I wouldn't want to touch it. Um, down here was all right. The workbench never got too hot. It didn't discolor anything. It didn't melt any of the plastic that I have inches behind it here. Whoops. But you know, I got away with it. Nothing burned down. And anyways, the casting looks pretty good. It clearly burned out all the resin because the metal filled in all the holes. This is just made in bronze, ancient bronze. It's 90% copper, 10% tin. Uh, and if you want to see how these rings turn out, You'll probably have to tune into a future video where I talk about the resin. Production schedules and uh, real life events being what they are, I didn't have time to get these finished in time for this video. You know, the video is about the kiln anyway, and the, clearly the burnout worked just fine. Okay, so it works fine for investment casting. What about some of those other uses they said? Heat treating, like I went over briefly. Um, yeah, you can heat treat stuff. As long as it fits, can't be too big. I haven't done any heat treating in a while, so take my statements there with a huge heap of salt. How about pottery? Well, I'm kind of skeptical there uh, because pottery is not fired by temperature. It's fired by heat work, which is temperature over time. Uh, there's no way to program a cone setting to this. There's also no cone sitter, which is a, a tool that would turn the thing off when it reached a certain amount of heat work, regardless of peak temperature. Um, and there's no, no openings through which you can look at a cone. You, by cones, I mean they're literally cones that you buy and you set up and you watch how they bend over. That's one of the reasons why kilns always have these big holes all over them. So you can put a cone in there, pop the thing out, take a look in and see when it's bending. This, you'd have to open the front to check out. And that mad rush of cold air is a good way to break things or cause cracks, something called crazing. They say on the, on the website that it's for glazing pottery. But again, glaze kind of works by cones too. Forget all the things about the cone and temperatures. You can modify it to be, to be totally fine and work perfectly good at firing cones and even schedules. The bigger problem is 
Uh, how many potters are out there watching? How many of you make and fire one mug at a time? Anyone? Not me. I filled a freaking kiln to the brim every time I fired it. You never fire one mug. Maybe I could use this to keep my coffee warm in one mug. Anyways, moving on. I bet it would work great as a sintering oven or uh, powder coating something. Uh, I know a lot of people in their garages, they use uh, toaster ovens for powder coating. Anything that fits in there, you could probably powder coat just fine. Sintering, probably also, it gets more than hot enough. Probably couldn't sinter alumina, but like anything metal, it's probably fine. Like any, any chamber that gets really hot has a million and one uses. And this is a very useful, very inexpensive way to do it. And if you want to plug and play uh, setup for investment casting, this electric melting furnace, this burnout kiln, and this vacuum casting machine behind me. This setup is a great way to get started with the lowest cost vacuum casting setup that actually works. Maybe, maybe there are cheaper ones out there. I wouldn't trust anything even cheaper though. But I will tell you, this furnace works, this burnout kiln works, this vacuum casting machine works, and you can do bronze with it. And if you can do ancient bronze, you can do silver and gold too, because that's not as high a temperature. I don't have any silver and gold, because I'm not made of money. But bronze, it works just fine.